Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Yomi action. This is Mystic Juicer casting some games. I've got triple threat action here. Fish vs. Dragon, Leontes vs. Frau Rolo, two really strong players. Players I really enjoy watching a lot, so I'm very excited about this match. Um, triple threat format, so it's a first to three wins. Um, if you've seen any if you haven't seen any other games, the way it goes is uh, before the beginning of the tournament, you've submitted a team of three characters that you're going to play. Those are the only ones you can play. And as soon as you lose with one of those characters, you can't field them again. So you basically have one life with each character. Um, and so then you're going to play until you eliminate the entire uh, other person's team. It's a really fun format. It's kind of different from standard counterpick. There is still some counterpicking going on between matches. You have to change characters can't elect to stay with anybody um, but you don't have the entire field to choose from so it typically helps to have a really balanced team that kind of stuff. so it's really fun I like it a lot uh, the teams we've got today so on Leontis' side we've got uh, Midori of course a uh, very strong Midori player we have Valerie and Zane so uh, basically a dragon grappler we've got Zane who's a really rushdown kind of character very, very strong uh, attack throw, a very aggressive character. And uh, Valerie, who's, uh, I think, probably the most pure footsies character in the game. Depends a lot on uh, building a hand. You, have, you really have to have a really, really well-rounded, I think, um, Yomi skill set. So you have to do a lot of valuation. You have to get your reads in. Uh, but she also has very strong uh, ability to reduce the speed or increase the, the speed of her uh, of her moves, make them faster, uh, so she can win on ties a lot. Uh, really fun character to play, huge damage potential. Um, really interesting character, a character I want to start playing around with a little bit more uh, in the future. I, I really like that, that kind of play style. It's, it's a really fun ride, basically. Good puzzle. Um, and on... Uh, Frau Rolo's team, we've got Argagarg, of course, uh, his main incredibly strong zoning character, um, and uh, Frau Rolo basically, for almost all of the tournament matches that he's ever played in, uh, has played exclusively Argagarg, with a very, very few exceptions, so he's a really, really well-developed Argagarg player. Um, and uh, actually, even though he came off to a kind of a rough start in Topanda, um, performed really, really well. Uh, really brought his average up at the uh, at the end. Uh, so, you know, a force to be reckoned with for sure. Um, then, as his second and third, he's got Grave and Satsuki. Uh, I believe, if I'm remembering um, the match results or match report thread accurately, he has typically led off Grave um, in in his previous matches. Um, is kind of different approaches that people take in these in these games um, one of the very common ones is you know lead your weakest character first uh, then go to your second weakest and then finish with your main um, so you kind of have you know any kind of I guess the philosophy is you know any kind of wins I get with uh, my non main are kind of free and if not then I get some time to develop an understanding of my opponent and maybe wear them down that kind of thing or or it gets really really serious uh, notably, so so the we are in winners round of eight. So this is uh, top eight uh, in the tournament. It's coming down to the wire. There's a lot of losers bracket that has to go through because it is double limb. Um, the winner of this match will go on to fight the winner of Entillerman versus CKR. So uh, I'm not sure when that's going down. Would love to see that match and commentate it. Of course, very strong players there too. Um, so it should be exciting, uh, and that'll be the, the fight in top four, and then so potentially um, potentially one of these players could end up in, uh, in the finals for triple threat. So looking at the, uh, the teams that both of these, these guys have, um, there's a couple of things that it's always interesting to kind of figure out what they're going to be picking as their leadoff character. Uh, in some cases, again, it's purely a, I think this is my weakest character, but I think the smartest thing to do is kind of look at what the odds are that you're going to be seeing any particular character, and I think the odds of that are determined a lot by 
sort of the relative strengths and weaknesses of any of your characters against any of theirs. So as an example, um, both of these mains, so the mains for both these characters, Midori versus Argugarg, is a very, very difficult match for Midori. Um, very, Argugarg has a lot of tools that uh, really harm Midori a lot. Um, Midori notably, I mean, he's, he's got an amazing queen, uh, dragon queen, so human queen at 1.0 speed, you know, is going to beat a lot, and at 0.6 speed is going to beat basically everything except for Blowfish Spikes. Blowfish Spikes is still the dominant uh, attack in the matchup from Argugarg at uh, 0.2 speed, uh, that double ace super move. Um, but once he doesn't have that queen, or if he doesn't have that queen in hand, or doesn't draw them, or anything like that, um, Midori can have a really hard time trying to get in on Argugarg. Um, his attack speed, you know, is his normals are at 0.2, but his fastest normal is at 4. And basically everything that Fra is going to play, you know, la unlike the other two grapplers, uh, Trok and Rook, Midori doesn't have um, an SPD. He doesn't have that um, king throw that goes through normal attacks. So there's really no reason for Fra to ever play, you know, a five attack or six attack or even a four attack at all. You can just play everything in that nice kind of two point, three point speed range. Um, and then Midori only has a 2.4 speed uh, jack. Um, so it can be really difficult to try to get through um, sort of Fra uh, Argugarg's kind of general attack options. Uh, his, he's got a 2.2 speed queen that deals 9 damage, so that's going to beat jack clean. Um, he's got a 2.4 speed jack and then a 3.2 speed king. So all of those are kind of awkward, uh, like typical fireball-y speeds um, that really give Midori a lot of trouble. And the thing about Argugarg anyway is that a lot of his, you know, his damage is going to come primarily from, or, or is going to be supplemented very, very heavily um, by out of combat damage, that 2 damage, uh, or 4 damage every turn. So you don't really, you're just basically playing to win combat, you're doing a lot of zoning, and uh, it can be a really tough match for Midori to try to get in. So I don't think, just, if, if Leontius decides to lead Midori, I think that that's going to be kind of a hard, it's almost like, an, it's like the ninth throw of character choices. <laughs> like, he, I think he's very comfortable um, against Grave, he's very comfortable against Suzuki, both of those matchups are very familiar to him. Um, looking at the, uh, the matchup stats um, for Leonta specifically, uh, in all tournaments, uh, he's got an 18-14 record with Midori versus Suzuki. Uh, I think he's, he's gone on record a couple of times saying, you know, he's very comfortable in that matchup. Uh, it's about basically a 56% win rate. That's, that's pretty good in terms of games, uh, individual games. Uh, he's got a 5-1 uh, win record against Grave, so about 83%. Much less data there. But the, the true story is really Midori versus Argugarg, where it's 6-11. So 6 wins to 11 losses, 35% win rate. Um, it's really, really tough. So... It, if he if he chooses Midori, it's very likely like even if if it goes well for him, if he beats the first character, if he beats Grave or Setsuki that comes out first, uh, the counter pick is going to be very quickly uh, for Fra Rollo to switch to Arg, which might be fine. Um, but the nightmare scenario is you lead Midori and then you encounter Arg right off the bat, and then you've got two characters that have to take care of. You know you're relying on, on Midori to carry at least one win. On the other hand, from, from Fraurolo's perspective, he may just say, okay, well, I'm definitely not going to lead Argugarg. Um, I need Argugarg, or I, I want to rely on Argugarg to basically counter Midori hard. Um, and given that I have him, probably not going to show up first, so I might as well field someone else. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the character select mix-up that we're going to see. Um, in terms of the other characters, so uh, Valerie versus the field... I think Valerie performs uh, pretty well against Argugarg. She has um, a lot of damage off of throws. She does have the dominant throws in the matchup. 
even not counting bursts of speed. Um, she has relatively good speeds and tools in the matchup. Uh, she has 2.4 speed normals, which clash with, uh, uh, with Argogargs. Um, so those, that all seems all right. She's got 1.0 speed aces that she can, you know, get a lot of access to fairly quickly, uh, which kind of pokes out uh, a lot of the, uh, um, the attack options that uh, Argogarg has access to. So it kind of becomes a game of, um, once she, once Valerie is able to build a hand, uh, you know, pressuring with, with single aces to kind of, uh, punish poking and also throwing to punish the, um, uh, the bubble shield play that will beat those those strong counter poke aces. Um, against Grave, Valerie is slight uh, slight to strongly disadvantaged against Grave based on what I remember on uh, uh, on discussions on the boards. Um, and I don't know how she does against Itsuki. Um, Valerie is kind of I think she has a reputation of being a strong rushdown character. I don't think that's actually where she's the most comfortable. I think. Um, like Jane, like a character like Jaina, she is much more of a counter hit, uh, footsies style character. I think she benefits a lot more from that kind of, um, play style. Um, whereas Setsuki is pure rushdown. She's an incredibly strong rushdown character. Notably, all three of Frau Rollo's characters have counters, uh, so they can disarm, uh, Valerie's burst of speed, uh, usage. But, you know, you... You're still playing Yomi, so if you're right, uh, and and Valerie can capitalize on you know no face down or or bluffs, um, she can get a lot of damage in very very quickly, even without access to any of her. Uh, Zane, I think, is strong against basically the entire field. Satsuki is thought to be, I think, it's kind of come to consensus that Satsuki is like slightly to moderately advantaged against Zane. Um, and otherwise, I think Zane is considered to beat Argogarg uh, and is considered to beat Grave. Uh, or actually, no, I think I think Grave Grave Zane is kind of considered Grave favored. Now that I think about it, and uh, notably in a previous uh, meeting of these two characters, Rarola was able to do quite well with in in Arg versus Zane. Um, so Zane might not be as strong a uh, pick against this team as as he would be against sort of a broad. Okay, I don't know what character or who I'm going to play against. Zane is a very safe, strong choice. Has a very very good record overall as a character, a very strong character. Um, so as to what I feel is going to come out from Argogarg's side, I think Grave covers a lot of options. He has already led him uh, fairly often in previous matches, and we probably see Arg held back to deal with Midori and Suzuki held back to deal with Zane specifically. Uh, and Grave Valerie is quite good, so uh, I think we probably see Grave from Frarolo. Um And then it's up to Leontes really to play the higher risk mix-up. Do I... You know, against against Grave, probably happy to lead Midori. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's let's play another character. Let's play maybe Zane or or bring Valerie into the, into the mix, depending on how comfortable he is. Okay, and it looks like these players are ready to go, so I'll give them the signal that we are all set, and uh, we'll get this show on the road. All right, been a while. Very excited. <laughs> okay, all right. Leontes makes the hard read. <laughs> he nine throws with uh, with Midori into this matchup, uh, and he is rewarded. He does face the uh, Frarola Grave. So we will see how this works out for him. Okay, opens with throw. Again, throwing into kind of same same. Reasoning, uh, that's a win for Midori, uh, as it is for Rook. Um, if you throw into Jack, you get the Jack out of their hand. You're happy to take eight damage. What you don't want to do, uh, what you don't want to allow uh, Grave to do, is build. And Jack lets him 
build evenly to you if you're blocking it. In addition to dealing some chip damage, but that's not really doesn't really matter. Strong blocks here. Uh, that initial throw, prompting some responses. Okay, plays the jack. Probably going to see 16 damage here. We see no flip. Okay. Just plays it to uh, potentially cover uh, grave, further grave jacks. So trading eight hit points, uh, trading eight life, both ways. Nice. Gets the throw. Okay, and just takes knockdown. So typically, uh, Midori not a character who really gets a ton of mileage out of uh, cross-up attacks, uh, or in fact, gets any kind of real significant mileage out of knocking their opponent down typically will follow that up with a, a 7 or an 8. Okay, gets thrown on Wake Up. Uh, Frau Rolo does not want to give him additional cards, so the, the throw, uh, or the knockdown there uh, from Leontes might have been just to uh, try to coax a Queen or a Jack out of Fra. Nice, Naked King throw, not in Dragon form at all, just dealing the 12 damage, no knockdown. Um, bit of a life lead for Leontes. What's significant is that he's got, he's keeping Grave at around seven cards. It's very, very nice for him. You do not want to allow. Okay, Shoryu cuts through the, uh, the weaker Jack, the slower Jack, deals that ten damage. Um, very nice to see those go. Uh, Grave has a lot of uh, his Queen undercuts a lot. Basically. It, his queen is the dominant attack in the matchup. Um, so as many of those as uh, Leontes can see in the discard without taking too much damage uh, is going to open up dragon queens of his own uh, as a combat reveal. But once again, going for knockdown probably signals he does not have a 7 or 8 in hand. Okay, we do see the uh, attempt to go into dragon form. Unfortunately, Grave just stares at his opponent until Midori uh, feels sad and <laughs> thinks better of it. Good dodge. Okay, goes right into uh, Wrath of Earth, dealing 20 damage. Does not want to uh, hang on to aces to potentially set up super throw. Um, in this matchup, barely likely that you're not going to get... Nice! Um, fairly likely that you're not going to get too many turns in dragon form or be able to get lots of glimpses off just because uh, graves counters depending on how well he draws them uh, you might just not get a chance before one or both of you are dead okay first block for grave shows him a nine he puts him in the he's trying to either either he's baiting a throw so that he can counter poke it um, or he really expects Leontes to block the counter poke, block or dodge the counter poke, in which case he is going to be able to sink that nine throw. Fairly unlikely that we're going to see a uh, block come out from uh, from Grave on this turn. Okay, actually plays the nine throw. Leontes saying, "Okay, sure, you know I'll give you a queen back. Uh, I'm much more worried about potential." Um, a counter poke into secret hidden three aces for massive damage. I'm not willing to take the risk. Um, so you know, happy to get thrown, and I'll uh, I'll hedge against hedge my bets here. Oh, good block. Okay, um, trying to catch some sort of button from um, Leontes to even up the life a little bit. He's working on a very nice lead here. Uh, Frau Rolo has to be worried about lethal damage off of any uh, hit confirm. Ooh! Trying to find a throw. Gets queened instead. That's an okay trade. That is now two queens of the discard. So Dragon Queen becomes that much stronger. And in fact, uh, aces become that much stronger. The only uh, option that Frau Rolo has are single ace at 1.0 speed. is still going to beat it. And as well as Queen. So we'll see how Fra reacts here. Does he counter poke the attempted throw here? Uh, he's he does have to think about getting hit by that ace ace because it will. Ooh, okay. Now he's choosing to dodge into it. 
This could be a Joker. Could see knockdown instead. Okay, doesn't go for knockdown. Goes for 12 damage. Um, hmm. Wondering if he just felt like that's, you know, it's probably not a Joker. I don't see... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see see what his hand is like. Because uh, I don't know why you would... Uh, potentially the only throws he has in his hand are on blocks. Hmm. Nope. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he would have had to either throw with the three to maintain pairs, so fives and eights, just to have the aces as backup. It's a really good hand. Uh, the only thing that's really missing is dodges, but he's already played two. Uh, so not terribly likely that he would have those. Uh, a fast attack or a jack. A jack is kind of very conservative. The only thing it loses to is immediate um, uh, immediate AA, uh, which, you know, once you've once an opponent's revealed their hand, and uh, it can feel very vulnerable to play just your best attack option uh, because it's, you know, it's already known. Or was it known? Did he power up? Yeah, yeah, yeah powered up, naked. Yeah, I can feel very uncomfortable to just sling AA. And you can see, yeah, playing just a conservative thing, the only thing it loses to you is, uh, is AA. So why not? I'll risk it. I'm still at one health, so I'm potentially still alive. Ooh, okay. I think we see follow-up into throw here. Yeah. Just set up for lethal. I'm surprised. I'm still surprised a little bit with the uh, the lack of a king throw there on the last turn. Okay, nice. Playing the two. I think they're just to pull as many uh, face cards out of uh, Frarolo's hand as possible. Okay, yeah, Frarolo spending his sevens, trying to look uh, to see if he has to be worried about uh, dodges or queens. Are the things he's really concerned about. Especially with two queens, two aces, and a discard. There's going to be very few things that beat um, even human queen, uh, which is already 10 damage. Now, notably, um, Leontes does not have glimpse, he does not have queen, so again, the mix up is still. Is he going to go for. He can go for even or odd mix up into lethal, uh, but any poke is going to beat that anyway. So he's got a. kind of got even odd. Or AA. Or just throw. Yeah, throw would have been uh, lethal as well. Throw into 8. Face down here. Probably not real. Yeah. Uh, you want to hang on to um, the real thing that's going to kill you uh, in this matchup. Or was going to kill him at uh, 56 health. Um, was just hidden uh, True Power of Storms. So... Ooh, and this is probably death. Yeah, face down into eight, lethal. Yeah, so the the he wanted to put the face down just in case it was real. I uh, took the risk about it being real uh, and uh, Fra Rolo disrespecting it uh, and playing the uh, potential true power of storms anyway. But on that many cards in hand, very unlikely. We only saw, or no, sorry, two aces were already in the discard, so that wasn't even a worry. So. Um, no, not sure what I was talking about there. <laughs> but that's basically the only thing that was going to get uh, Fra back into the game. So now we're going to see Argogarg show up. The door, or so uh, Leontes is immediately going to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so there's the, <laughs> there's the reasoning for going into Midori. <laughs> okay, gets thrown. So now, uh, if... Uh, if Leontes gets thrown to death in this matchup, I want to formally apologize to him now on camera, uh, because I did advise him that uh, I suspected that some of the difficulty, not all of it, it is a very challenging match for Midori. Nice counter poke, wow! The four attack though. <laughs> That's not something you see every day. The only question is, does he have something to lead into it, or is he going to use this to draw some cards? Uh, if he's got 4, 5, 6, that'd be amazing. Um, otherwise, just picking up. Ooh, very, very nice. Goes card neutral, gets an ace in his hand. Very, very handy. Awesome combat win there. And uh, probably a good indicator that Frarolo doesn't have any... Well, he definitely doesn't have any 2s, because there's no reason for uh, Argarg to lead a 4 if he doesn't have a 2. 
Or if he has a 2, I should say. Okay, blocks a queen. It's going to make uh, Leontis' jacks just that much stronger. But I think, um, but, but yeah, recently in, in Rooks vs. the World, I mentioned uh, part of the difficulty Leontes might be having in this matchup. Uh, I think I watched him play it. I can't remember if it was against Hydro or maybe Rad XT. Uh, or maybe it might have been Fraurolo as well. Um, was that I think he was playing a little bit too aggressively. Um, it, can be, it can be tricky if you're in uh, an awkward matchup to relax um, to let, especially in this matchup, to let Argogarg deal, you know, much more, a much higher percentage of, of damage with his innate, uh, because you're just blocking a lot and building hand. But I think it's really what you need to do. You, you know, as Midori, you need to, you need to get the cards in hand so that you have the dodges, which are really, really effective. Like, you can potentially dodge into 20 damage, into 16 damage, uh, into 17 damage if you manage to get his dragon form more if you're you know if you get the super throw and dragon form off okay Fraurolo, uh getting low on cards and uh going for a very safe option there he wanted to hedge against dragon queen uh, he puts aces in his hand now the mix-up is on both sides of this character uh, or on both sides you've got potential uh ace block and ace ace on argagarg's side and the kind of uh, complementary moves uh, on both of those options. So ace, single ace block, or a counter poke, that five that we just saw, or double ace or throw, because it's the dominant attack. And on the other hand, you have the, the responses from Midori, right? Uh, dodging to try to get around AA, um, and also hedging against single ace and, and counter pokes, um, and then counter throwing to beat single ace, and uh, and throws, aggressive throws from Argogard. So fairly even life totals here. Um, typically, oh, awkward stuff. Unfortunate. Tried to stuff a uh, uh, another throw or a poke, and instead activates bubble shield. So he's on a bit of a timer. It'd be very difficult in this situation to not... Uh, uh, it's just, just advantage time for for our guard. Uh, you know, four damage a turn instead of two. Moves the clock up uh, quite rapidly. Um, and then no matter what he loses to, um, there's really no huge penalty for him. And that, even that, uh, you know, immediately going out of dragon form, or immediately going out of uh, bubble form, I should say, <laughs> um, you've, you know, Argarg or Fraurolo has lost a nine throw, and Leontes has lost a uh, queen. There's another part of why this matchup is so difficult. Again, another character with counters. And uh, you can just keep you out of a state where you almost need to be in order to have a maximal dodge punish or a maximal um, block punish um, for, for Midori. Having access to super throw is really, really, really good. Um, and I think part of the reason that this is such a bad matchup for him is that um, Argogar can deny that really strong option for him, uh, from him at any point in the game. Ooh, good poking here from, uh, from Fra. Sinking some damage. Ooh, nice. Okay, he found both Jokers. Uh, first Joker did not land. Uh, this one does, which is very, very good. You want to have as much momentum as possible. Um, as Midori in this matchup. I think that's the only way you can make it as anywhere near close to good for yourself. <laughs> okay, and he gets Dragonform off. This is really, really fantastic. So now the, the shoe is on, on Frau Rolo. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Sinks the super throw. Do we have... He's about halfway through his deck. Okay, chooses not to follow it up. Perfectly fine. So he, he leaves a lot of damage on the board, but again, this is an even match now. Uh, it's an even situation. Got uh, a lot of cards in hand, which which uh, benefit uh, Leontes much more than they do uh, Fra. Um, Fra does have two aces. No, sorry, he used one. Okay, no, he powered it back up. So he, he does have two known aces in hand, so he does have the point two response. 
Ooh, pokes out with the nine. Dealing some damage here. Uh, he might be hedging more against the fact that you don't... That Leontis, A, doesn't feel comfortable blocking, or that he knows he doesn't have any dodges. Um, at any point, if he does block... Oh, too bad. Too bad. Yeah, that's a rough situation to be in. Okay, Fra's going to pile on the damage while he can. Dealing 16, well, 18 with his innate. Putting him in lethal range to Ace Ace. Leontes powering up. Okay, tempting Dragon Form once more. Uh, one Ace in the discard, so even raw. Oh, that's brutal. Okay, so he's not going to be able to pump this anyway. If he did have the third ace, he's not going to be able to play it if he plays it this turn. Uh, so the mix-up is much more dodge, dragon queen, dragon king. We have seen two kings already, two queens already. Nice! Sinks the dragon queen, 14 damage. That's going to put him... Uh, if he has the third ace in hand, uh, Leontes has potentially lethal dragon buster. Okay, once again... Rarolo, playing the 7, playing Protective War, trying to get out of this situation. Just needs to find 10 damage. So, throw into anything is going to be lethal. Attack into anything is going to be lethal. Uh, especially considering Leontes has played both. Very nice! Dragon Queen again. Just deal 14. He maintains, uh, in this way, strong pressure on uh, his throws. Uh, which makes his do any potential dodges he has much stronger. Uh, we've seen Frarolo go for throws twice in a row. Do we see him go for the third gutsy throw? He has not played. He's not revealed an ace either as a block or as an attack. I think he wants to hedge against dodge more than he wants to hedge against anything else. Does not play another seven, so. This is lethal on both sides. Coming down to a coin flip here. Leontes in a good position to make hay out of a bad matchup. Do we find lethal? Does he have the Joker? Uh, has played one. I think you have to go for it here. You either go for lethal if you have it with Dragon King, or you knock down. Finds lethal! Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played. Yeah, and that's that's that uh that's that dangerous dance that uh Midori has to go for in that matchup and uh beautifully played by by Leontes coming out on top in a very difficult and frustrating uh <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> So, so uh, all coaching is is fair because it did not happen during stream. It did not happen during the match. It was all prior to. <laughs> but yeah, that is. Uh, I think I think that matchup is absolutely. It's it's very similar for Rook. Um, you have to build momentum. Uh, you have to allow yourself to be thrown. Um, and and even if you don't allow yourself to be thrown, if you do counter throw, you want to be prompting that counter throw. Ooh. Tough loss here. Um, ace Ace getting poked out by Queen. And Frarolo is going to be able to dump his hand. Oh, gets the Ace damage too. Very, very nice damage. Does get rid of two Queens and two Aces in the process. Uh, do we see a 7? We do not. Okay. Uh, so Midori on 6 cards. Difficult uh, situation. I think in this matchup, uh, what Midori is really aiming for is just to deal 70 damage as fast as possible. Uh, so any queens, like, you you can't really get away with building a hand, I think. Um, your options are just, like, the options that you, that are strong, your queen, uh, your dragon queen at 0.6 speed, your ace-ace, are just so expensive. Uh, the nice thing that you can do as Midori, though, is cover against... Um, options really strong on Speed of the Fox turns. So on Speed of the Fox turns, Satsuki has this ability to basically ghost repose. She can dodge into a full combo. However, because Midori is awesome, um, <laughs> because he's the scrub character, as uh, Leontes would say, 
Um, he just doesn't allow dodges at all. So uh, playing a dragon attack uh, in that situation is only going to be beaten. Like dragon, dragon queen is only going to be beaten by a uh, queen from Frau Rollo uh, on on the speed of the fox turn, or or a block, which you really don't want to do as Satsuki on speed of the fox turns. Sinking some throws. Uh, all of the uh, rushdown characters have very very strong uh, throw games because of how much damage they got off of, off of throws, which tends to be very, very high in comparison to most of the other cast. And also because, because they're rushdown characters, they have you know, dominant um, attack speeds, so your opponent is incentivized to block a lot to prevent that, block and dodge a lot to prevent that. Um, and also because if you are a rushdown character, part of your kit is to mitigate uh, the need to block. Uh, and Setsuki does that by having speed of the fox. So sinks another throw here. Okay, goes for knockdown instead. So was not able to dump, potentially can dump off of this knockdown setup. This could be a very strong block or gold burst set, uh, setup from Frau Rollo. Uh, because the temptation um, Midori, uh, from the Midori side is going to be play something that covers against cross up normals. Um, and typically that means a dragon move of some kind. So he can either dragon move or block. Yeah, dragon queen there. It's going to get around any potential uh, attack starters. He sinks 10 damage. He has spent, uh, I believe that's his second dragon queen? Oh no, first, okay. So he's still got a lot. The, the only issue here is that Farrell has been playing a lot of throws, and so momentum... Oh no! <laughs> oh, the big throw punish from Farrell. This could lead into potentially big damage. No, nothing. Wow, okay, okay, it's awkward hand time. So, Leontes has got to capitalize. He's got to navigate uh, normal pokes, uh, which are going to defend this awkward hand from throws, uh, but also throw so that uh, Satsuki is not able to block or normal poke her way into uh, a better hand. Oh, or was it just a setup for that queen? Okay, so throws away some throws, some fours, six. No, still quite an awkward hand. Uh, but at nine uh, hit points for your opponent, any hand is a good one. Throw into three is going to be absolutely fine. And oh, gets the dump off of Smoke Bomb. Really unfortunate. Does sit on one card this turn, but oh god, it's an ace two for lethal. <laughs> wow, beautifully played by Fra Rolo. Fantastic use of Satsuki. Good setups. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> I like, you know what? Hey, if you've got the cards, play the cards, right? <laughs> that was really nicely played. <sighs> nicely picked options there. Even if those were top decks, those were really well-chosen combat options on, on a lot of turns. Uh, played a very conservative Satsuki and uh, comes out on top. So, um, Leontes has a choice between Valerie or Zane to deal with, uh, with the Setsuki. Um, both of those characters are going to have very similar game plans uh, to Midori, actually. <laughs> they are still going to have to fear Queen, uh, Setsuki Queen, at 0.0, .0 speed. Um, Zane is going to play, or actually both of them are basically going to play a attack throw uh, range until they have a hand, if they can navigate their way to a hand. Um, Zane, if he can block his way to a big hand, has a, you know the potential to open up his game plan a lot uh, by threatening max anarchy off of dodge or just raw, uh, which is also 0, 0.0 speed, so if it finds a queen, it basically devours it, uh, chews up the husks, and uh, and then spits the remains into the onto the floor. Uh, so that is basically Satsuki working on a timer. Uh, she has to pick right. She has to not walk into standing nine attack into huge damage. Um, she wants to avoid media attacks as much as possible, which she can. Uh, her single ace is very powerful there, and she's a character that likes to uh, discard. Like she has a lot of momentum, so she can draw into cards uh, very quickly. Um, so she's going to get a lot of. Aces naturally, uh, she's going to find uh, the potential to develop pairs and stuff uh, very 
uh, fairly easily, I think. Um, and she's always got Wake Up Queen to deal with that. On the Valerie side, uh, Valerie has a 0.2 speed queen, which is going to be the poking tool of choice. Um, that is going to lose to only um, Satsuki's queen. Um, her difficulty is once she has a big hand, there's not a ton of stuff. I suppose she can try to play a lot of single ace, um, which is going to sit at a fairly good speed at 1.0 uh, speed. It's only really going to lose to queens. Uh, it beats jacks. It's going to beat kings. Uh, aces can tie. I think single ace from Setsuki is also 1.0. Yeah, fairly certain about that. Uh, although the trade there is that uh, you know 80, 80 health character in Valerie versus 70 health character in Setsuki. Um, 10 damage dealing ace on Valerie's side and 9 damage dealing ace on Satsuki's side. So that's not a direct war that, that Satsuki wants to play, the war of, of ace attrition. Um, but Satsuki has queens. So anytime, though, you know, if you're playing a very, very heavy, aggressive single ace range from Valerie, um, you could just lose any kind of advantage you have in the in the single ace war. Oh. Huh? Is Leontis a... Does he have a Menelk? Oh, okay. So I might have called his team completely wrong. So we're seeing Menelker. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, well... So Manelker has a couple of neat options. If he ever finds a queen in Satsuki's discard, he can get rid of a really strong option that way. The difficulty is that he's also 70 health, so this match is probably going to last about five turns, uh, if they're the wrong turns for, for any one of these characters. So 20 damage, immediately dealing... A little bit less than a third of uh, Manalker's total hit points. And, uh, yeah. Oh, man. I don't know about this. <sighs> kind of a difficult, I think, difficult match for Manalker, but I'm by no means at all an expert in this. Uh, I suppose, I mean, he's, he does have queens. They can hedge against uh, Setsuki queens, which are very nice. Um, he does have a 2.2 speed Tatsu. Um, but that's only going to tie with uh, Satsuki's king. It does come ahead in damage, but eh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's just see what happens. So 20 damage on uh, on Satsuki, so even life totals. Uh, they're back in neutral, no speed of the fox turn, so... Ooh, duffs out that 7th throw. Yeah, very important to sync those. Okay, it gets rid of a 10. Does not take uh, any additional combo damage, though. So, Frarolo slightly adjusting the composition of his hand uh, using those pokes. Any damage. Okay. Uh, Frarolo playing very conservative poking game. Does not want to get tagged. Oh, okay. Nope, just had two aces. <laughs> Very conservative poking game, game into uh, just a crap ton of damage to Manalker's soul. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think Frarolo has a bit of a sense that uh, Leontes does not want to spend any time blocking. Okay. This is a good this is a good win for uh, for Leontes. He does get two cards out of uh, Frarolo's hand. It's basically like a mini Joker uh, when your ability gets countered. Four cards to four cards. Okay, finds a black queen. Is going to be able to draw off of this. He's not going to get too much damage though. Probably use this to uh, build your hand a little bit. 
Okay, discards another ace. Okay, yeah, and bluffs. Putting himself that one card in hand uh, in order to get Speed of the Fox off. That is three queens in the discard, and I think we see a, a power up for a black queen here. Just to force. Oh, okay. Hmm. So we have the threat of. Jack starter into ace ace, I think, is the. I mean, or he has the other three aces, and those are the only other cards in his hand. Okay, gets rid of another two cards in hand, so he's not going to get uh, destroyed on this uh, combat loss if he does take a combat loss here. Does have to make up some damage, but he does have a single ace in hand. Very nice block. Finds the block at last. Uh, leaves Setsuki on a two card or a three card hand. Is not able to power up out of it. Okay, gets rid of a Joker. Was in his hand. Oh. Okay. Leaving him at two cards in hand. Really strong uh, situation for Leontes here. Typical Setsuki play is to dodge or throw. Ooh, king throw. Interesting. Not sure what that was covering. Possibly, possibly Frarolo believed Leontes's um, threat of death, dodge into Death Strike Dragon, or maybe it was just dodge into anything. Good damage off of that too. Puts him at fourteen. No cards in hand. He is going to be able to get Speed of the Fox. Queen here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he only needs to hit with queen once in order to win this. A uh, lot of pressure on Frau Rolo to either play a queen or a dodge in this situation. Because uh, a throw is going to lose very hard to... Yeah, throw is going to lose very hard to just raw queen, uh, as is any other attack option. Uh, queen at least trades, so you're only taking eight. Um... And of course, dodge beats it. So the mix-up there was very much uh, throw from Leontes or, or Queen. He doesn't have to worry about gold bursts anymore, so there's really nothing that can hedge against both of those options. Except for Queen of its own, which makes throws very risky. Sinks the throw, and this is going to be for lethal. Wow, with the six it is lethal. Wow! Okay. Whew! Finds the Joker right on time. Maintains a black queen in hand. No sevens, because no cards in hand. So not even the possibility of sevens to be able to threaten. Uh, single queen in the discard, though. So, very, very high likelihood on the next couple of turns that he has one in hand. The question is, will he play it? But he's going to play it raw. Potentially getting dodged into uh, lethal joker. Or Lethal Queen, I should say, from uh, from Leontes. Both both character or both players playing very very conservative dodges on the, on those turns, uh, forcing their opponents, if they wanted to take a combat win on that turn, to play the riskiest of all combat options, the throw, which they both were in a situation to blow up quite badly. Ooh, and that is GG. Win number three, because there's no way you can have three Jokers in your deck. Especially not online. Maybe offline you could get those shenanigans. <laughs> but not here. And Leontis takes it in uh, very, very nice fashion. Beautifully played by, uh, by both players. Really, really nice, nice games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very tense. Uh, especially that second, that, that Midori vs. Arg game. Very, very tight ropey. Uh, had to bide his time for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Satsuki went in for sure and did not let up. <laughs> the Dragon Master paid for his crimes against Fishkind. So bravo uh, to, uh, to Leontes to, um, uh, for taking the win. Uh, good games to Fra Rolo, well played. And uh, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, I'll see you all next time.